What if a simple daily habit could cut your melanoma risk nearly in half, even if you've had abnormal moles or a past diagnosis? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're looking at the link between vitamin D and melanoma risk, why consistency may matter more than your blood test number, and how safe sun practices fit in. I'm Alara Sky and the stakes are clear. The National Cancer Institute estimates about 104,960 new melanoma cases and 8,430 deaths this year. Many people respond by avoiding the sun entirely, but that can leave you short on vitamin D, an oversight the research suggests you can't afford. A recent study from the University of Eastern Finland followed 498 adults already at higher risk for skin cancer. Participants reported their vitamin D use and were grouped as regular users, occasional users, or non-users. This included people with atypical moles, precancerous changes, and even prior melanoma. Regular supplementation stood out. Among consistent users, 18.1% had a current or previous melanoma diagnosis, compared to 32.3% in non-users, a near 50% difference. Occasional users saw some benefit, but the strongest signal came from regular use. The study didn't find significant links between supplementation and basal or squamous cell carcinoma, or with photoaging markers. One unexpected detail was that protection appeared regardless of measured blood levels. In other words, the act of taking vitamin D consistently correlated with reduced risk, even when calcidiol levels didn't fully explain it. The authors noted that the optimal oral dose still needs clarification and advised following national intake recommendations while evidence accumulates. Let's unpack the blood level question briefly. Calcidiol, the 25-hydroxyvitamin D measured on your lab test, is converted to the active form, calcitriol. A review in anti-cancer research points to a U-shaped curve. Risk rises when levels are too low or too high. Very high levels were linked with greater rates of certain cancers, so chasing extremes is not the goal. High-dose therapy is controversial, especially without vitamin K2 and magnesium due to potential calcium mismanagement. A separate line of evidence examined outcomes after melanoma diagnosis. Researchers at the University of Leeds found that higher vitamin D levels at diagnosis aligned with thinner tumors and better survival. Serum levels above 65.6 nanomoles per liter, 26.3 nanograms per milliliter, were associated with lower relapse, and each 20 nanomoles per liter increase related to a 21% improvement in relapse-free survival. People who reached roughly 70 nanomoles per liter or higher did best. Tumor thickness, measured by Breslow depth, tracked inversely with vitamin D. Thinner tumors are more treatable and predict better outcomes. This points toward prevention and maintenance. You don't want to play catch up after a problem appears. You want to establish and sustain an optimal status early. Mechanistically, vitamin D binds to receptors in your cells and influences growth, repair, and immune function. In lab and animal studies, the active form reduced DNA damage after UVB exposure, prevented cell death in skin cells, slowed tumor growth and metastasis in some melanoma lines, and encouraged more normal cell behavior. Vitamin D receptor activity also dampened MAPK signaling by suppressing EGFR pathways commonly upregulated in melanoma. Zooming out to broader cancer data, a 2023 meta-analysis reported that vitamin D three supplementation lowered cancer mortality by 6%, and daily dosing was linked to a 12% reduction. Observational work from Grassroots Health associated vitamin D levels at or above 60 nanograms per milliliter, 150 nanomoles per liter, with an 82% lower breast cancer risk versus levels below 20 nanograms per milliliter, 50 nanomoles per liter. These findings support the idea that maintaining a strong vitamin D status has far-reaching implications. How you reach that status matters. Safe daily sun exposure is presented as the best option. A practical sunburn test helps you calibrate. Stay just below the point where your skin turns even slightly pink and exit the direct sun before any redness. Any reddening is a sign you've gone too far. 
there's also a dietary factor related to sun tolerance. Seed oils high in linoleic acid accumulate in your skin and can amplify oxidative damage under UV. The guidance here is to avoid direct peak sun exposure until you've eliminated seed oils for at least six months. Tracking intake with a tool like the Merkola Health Coach app's Seed Oil Sleuth can help you measure progress. A faster adjunct mentioned is pentadecanoic acid, C15-0. Consuming 250 milligrams daily may help purge stored linoleic acid from skin more quickly, with emerging research suggesting larger doses might offer more benefit. This is positioned as a way to shorten the window before your skin tolerates sunlight more safely. If you can't avoid peak sun during that transition, additional protective measures are suggested. Take 12 milligrams of astaxanthin daily to increase UV resilience. Apply niacinamide, vitamin B3 cream before and after sun exposure. Taking a baby aspirin 30 to 60 minutes beforehand is proposed to limit oxidized linoleic acid metabolites that can drive damage. The article also sets target blood levels. The recommended range is 60 to 80 nanograms per milliliter, with 40 nanograms per milliliter as the minimum threshold for sufficiency. In Europe, that's 150 to 200 nanomoles per liter, with 100 nanomoles per liter as the lower bound. The point is to live in the middle, neither deficient nor excessive. Testing closes the loop. You're encouraged to measure your vitamin D twice a year, adjust sun exposure and or vitamin D3 supplementation based on the result, and then retest in three to four months to confirm you've reached your target. This cadence keeps you in the protective zone rather than guessing. Consistency is a recurring theme. The Finnish data linked regular supplementation with fewer melanoma cases, even when blood levels didn't fully account for the effect. The Leeds data connected higher levels with thinner tumors and better outcomes. The lab and animal evidence shows plausible pathways. When you stack these pieces, the message is to build and sustain a stable, adequate vitamin D status while practicing safe sun. Here's your challenge based on today's discussion. Schedule a vitamin D blood test this week. Pick a consistent plan. Safe sun exposure calibrated to avoid any pinkness and or a daily vitamin D3 routine. And audit your kitchen for seed oils so you can transition away from them. Set a reminder to retest in three to four months to verify progress. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.